Hi, I'm Rick Kaler, and thanks for joining me. Economic indicators have historically been powerful predictors of who will win the White House, and this year isn't any exception. With polls showing Kamala Harris and Donald Trump in a almost a dead heat, how do the key economic metrics favor each candidate? Let's start with the misery index, which combines inflation and unemployment rates and is used to measure economic discomfort. With inflation at about 3 or 4% and unemployment below 4%, the current misery index is around 7. The incumbent party has historically won with a 60 to 65% chance when the misery index is below 10. Yet Republican candidates continue to claim we're headed toward a depression, despite the numbers saying otherwise. Next is the GDP growth. Uh, this is a strong indicator of how well the economy is performing. Growth is currently at a steady 2 to 3 percent. And when GDP growth exceeds 2 percent, the incumbent party wins about 75 percent of the time. Republican candidates continue to highlight economic woes, but the steady growth numbers give Harris a stronger case. Uh, so that said, not all sectors are feeling this growth equally. Many workers, particularly rural areas or energy sectors, may feel left behind by the recovery. And Trump's uh, messaging is often targeting those voters. Let's look at real disposable income. This is the money that people have left after taxes and inflation. And it's growing modestly at about a percent and a half to 2%. This gives Harris an edge since income growth of any kind correlates with an 80% chance of the incumbent party winning. However, inflation has outpaced wage growth in certain areas, <clears throat> meaning for some voters, real wages have stagnated. The economic anxiety that is around this could help Trump. And also, um, uh, a lot of folks conflate higher prices with inflation. So this whole issue can be a little fuzzy. So uh, if people are not feeling that their paychecks are not keeping up with rising costs, of course, this is not going to favor the incumbent party. Uh, then there's the Consumer Confidence Index. This reflects how optimistic voters feel. The current level is 105. That's enough to tilt things toward Harris as confidence over 100 tends to favor the incumbent with a 65 to 70 percent probability. Still, Trump continues to hammer the message that the economy is in a tailspin, pushing his supporters to believe drastic change is needed. His focus on issues like rising energy costs and dissatisfaction in manufacturing heavy regions might resonate with those voters who feel disconnected from the broader economic recovery. Perhaps the most powerful economic metric is the stock market. The S&P 500 has climbed 23% so far year to date. And when the market rises, the three months before an election, which this certainly has done, the incumbent party has an 83% chance of retaining the presidency. Trump praised the stock market's success under his own administration as a testament to his economic policies. Yet now, with similar market gains under a Democrat president, he claims the economy is in collapse. This contradiction highlights how political rhetoric often shifts depending on which party is in power, even when the economic numbers tell a very different story. And both parties do this. So here's the summary of the chance of victory for Harris from each indicator. The misery index is 62.5% chance, GDP growth 75% chance, real disposable income an 80% chance, consumer confidence a 67.5% chance, the stock market an 83% chance, and when you give some, you know, some weighting to all those, there's about a 73% chance, that's three out of four, that Harris will win the presidency. However, despite these favorable economic numbers, the betting markets su suggest a different narrative 
on several platforms, Donald Trump has pulled ahead. He has a 54% chance of winning on Odds Shark and is favored on Betfair with odds of 1.92, that's 10 out of 11. And Trump is also leading in the key swing states like Georgia and Arizona, where his odds are as high as a minus 225. All that say, all that says is that the betting markets are favoring Trump right now. So as we approach election day, the final outcome of this race remains unpredictable, even though all of the economic indicators are leaning to Harris. Economic metrics favor her, but the, like I said, the betting markets and Trump's ability to gain ground in battleground states show this election could go either way. As always, the only indicators that ultimately matter are the choices that voters make when they cast their ballots. Thanks for joining me.